I've been spending a lot of my free gaming time playing through this Grimdon mod Nidamar on a few different characters. It's my goal to do most of the content on Ultimate Difficulty from scratch, and then maybe dive into a hardcore playthrough, potentially. So I figured I could use this time to put together some quick tips and tricks that other people playing through this mod can make use of, since there were a few things that I noticed while rolling new characters that made the early parts of this game much smoother. First off, and probably the biggest thing, is that bounties are extremely important from the lectern of questing. Making use of leveling bounties alongside these scattered notes that give a ridiculous amount of XP, you'll notice an extremely faster leveling phase. This is great and all, but you need to be careful about how quick you level up if you have no gear ready for later levels so you don't end up out leveling your own gear since the enemies are leveling with you. Thankfully, it's much easier to gather gear in this mod with loot orbs and generally better drops, but it's still important to make sure you don't become outleveled. Once you hit level 50, you'll be locked out of normal difficulty gearing bounties, so if your build is weak, you're going to have to settle for farming the normal vanilla way, or just start over. Same on level 75 on Elite. I think your main goal in normal difficulty should be to complete all 6 of the devotion dungeons before hitting level 50 so you can do the bounties as you're doing these dungeons. The dungeons found in Hot and Mine and the Tomb are probably the two easiest to get, but it does still require a good build to complete, which is why balancing your gear and levels are so important. The one illusory dungeon found from Odal Aelis Place is actually the easiest to complete by far. It can require no combat at all as long as you have the materials and you know where the real shrines are, but you still need to pay the entry fee of 35k iron bits and a few aether crystals to access Odal Aelis Dungeon and get to that orb. The Strange Well has its devotion orb at the very end of the roguelike dungeon. It's a pretty tough dungeon to get through, it requires you to go on three different puzzle-legged rooms, the elements room being particularly challenging if you don't have any form of extra healing or health regen, but it becomes much easier with just a little bit of practice. The Haze Room is just a simple wave-based combat in a foggy room, and the Immortal Bastard can be killed by luring him into the green circle in the middle of his room. Sanctuary also has its devotion orb at the very end, which is pretty rough since the dungeon is really long and requires you to know where to find the vanishing keys to get to the end. You unlock Sanctuary by grabbing a key by the entrance to the catacombs, using that key to unlock the side door which leads to a hidden lever that opens up a hidden pathway to the Sanctuary dungeon. You don't have to take any curses to have access to the devotion orb, these curses are just for extra loot at the end. The Sanctuary Dungeon is this big huge field with a lot of monsters where you have to search for vanishing keys to progress to these stages. You can get a key by killing the boss in the center of the first area, one hidden in a random stump around the second area, one from killing all three bosses in the third area, and also one in a hidden rock in the third area. Then you pick your boss fight, the hardest one giving you 3 keys. Remember that you only really need 4 keys to get to the devotion sphere, but the extra keys will give you some amazing loot at the end if you really want to go for that. Devotion Dungeon is a pretty simple one where you just kill all the enemies. It's just that the orb itself is kind of a pain to find in the sanctuary if you don't know what you're doing, but hopefully that little segment was able to help you find where that is. The final Devotion Sphere will be found in the Ashes, just beside the platform where the final fight of this mod takes place. The dungeon will go through multiple waves, all with their own set spawn times. The next wave will spawn even if you haven't defeated the last. The first few waves are pretty easy, but don't let that fool you because after that things start getting super crazy, and you better hope your Chaos Resist and your Fire Resist are both maxed for this. I usually leave this dungeon until the end, because it's by far the most difficult if your build isn't prepared, but rewards you with 6 devotion points upon completing it, which is pretty good. And all of those dungeons will leave you with a total of 22 devotion points for normal difficulty, then you can progress on to elite without having to feel so bad. And now that you're on elite, you can go right for the next devotion points, but you're not on a timer like you are in normal. At this point, you might want to shift your attention over to the faction area, since you're reaching that level where you'll be needing augments for resistances, blueprints for crafting, and a lot of the gear that the faction vendors sell. If you reach level 75, you'll only be able to access this arena on ultimate, so you should try to do this before then. The faction rewards are the exact same for every difficulty, and it's super easy on normal if you're worried about dying and wasting your faction tickets. And you can get the faction tickets by either completing many of the quests in this mod, or just by picking them up through chests. 
And just like normal Grim Dawn, you're going to need a good method of farming gear and XP to reach ultimate, but you won't be grinding nearly as much as you would be with vanilla because of the things added in this mod, most notably the bounties in the faction area. A good spot I found to farm when you have absolutely nothing and your build is really weak is the snowy landscape running to the aether crystal meteor spot, wiping them out and getting that materials chest, and then walking east to the frozen cave dungeon which is pretty easy with the right resist and has a decent reward room at the end. The Haunted Mine is much better though, it's an amazing spot to farm early. It's just a more advanced version of Vanilla's Cromley's Hideout. The key to the boss is hidden somewhere randomly in the dungeon, so your times may vary if you're not familiar with the area. If you're strong enough to survive until the end, there is an amazing reward room that has guaranteed me at least 4 epics each time, as well as this hidden materials chest that gives you a ton of components. Also, the boss fight spawns in a bunch of Aether Crystals, which is great for feeding your gambling addiction in Odal Ayla's dungeon. Odal Ayla's dungeon is a dungeon that will cost you quite a bit of Aether Crystals, which can be gathered in bulk through crafting bounties or through that boss fight that I just mentioned, and it also requires a skeleton key which can just be crafted like normal. The place is pretty cool. A simple explanation is that you go through up to 7 different rooms with a random event in each room. Some of these events are bad, like just spawning a bunch of monsters, you can even spawn nemesis bosses, and some of these events can be good, like a chest or a quest, and some can be absolutely amazing, like the super rare special chest that grants a ridiculous amount of items. It's basically a casino dungeon. If you have the aether crystals to spare, you definitely should go and try your luck. When your build is feeling pretty strong, and you're feeling confident, the Sanctuary Dungeon we talked about earlier has an amazing amount of rewards at the end. Just running through the dungeon like normal with like say 2 keys or something would be pretty easy, but if you want to min-max it and go for that full 8 keys and double curses, you'll be rolling in legendaries and crafting materials and iron bits. These were just the favorite spots that I found to farm as I played, there are probably so many more spots so feel free to test things out and explore. And here's two more little bonus min-maxing tips. First of all, there are journeyman's packs scattered all over the place that drops a bunch of potions so you don't have to constantly restock on them early. And secondly, the faction area rift is actually much more efficient than the edge of eternity rift since the bounty lectern, a stash, a shops, and even a crafting station are much closer to that rift. And that's the end of this video. I don't know exactly how many people are playing this mod, how many people this will help, but hopefully it was at least useful to one person, if not even me, I can just come back and look at this. Uh, if you found some good tricks to this mod, let us know in the comments, and thank you for watching.